Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, Flyer's Ed. My name is Gordon. I'm here with our instructor, Mr. Fister, once again. Good afternoon, class. How are you today, sir? Not too bad. Um, we are changing our tactics once again, I gather. We are adapting to information available to us. Since our last recording session, uh, we shared the persistence file and the craft files so that I could recreate the environment with the same mods on my end. And I did a lot of flight testing that met with uh, much beleaguered success, or should I say, met with some success that was much beleaguered. So uh, I decided to call an audible, and we're going to introduce a couple of mods uh, to the viewers and describe what our shortcomings were with our previous designs to rescue our stranded crew on the surface of the moon. Alrighty. Yeah. Um, we have a craft that I designed and ported over to you, the Kerbal X Mark II. Uh, two, two very uh, simple changes. Um, mm -hmm. One mod w uh, was important, and another mod was less important but helpful. Uh, right. let's for right now we're looking at the uh, RCS build aid mod. Now, if you could uh, rotate the camera for us so that we're looking up from underneath. Mm -hmm. What do you see about that center of mass that strikes you? It's it's red. There's a red nope. circle on the center of mass. There's two new. independent comms being displayed, a yellow and a yeah. red, and it just so happens mm -hmm. that they're they're almost concentric. And now, is that a good thing? Uh, it, it means you have a very stable craft. It's a it's a testament to the original designer of this craft. Uh, and the fact that there's even that much offset was probably a result of what I did with the second mod that we're going to be talking about in a minute. The yellow mm -hmm. uh, center of mass is what we're all used to. It is the fueled center of mass. The red center of mass is dry weight, fuel and fluids depleted. Ah. For designing an RCS system on any orbit capable or, or RCS landing craft, you can't really land with RCS except for on, uh, well, Minmus if you're really patient and uh, out on uh, one of the moons of Jewel as far as I know and possibly uh, Drez and Gilly. But, um, you need to understand how the movement of the center of mass will affect your translation and rotation stability with your RCS jet placement. Uh, uh -huh. As we can see with these arrows, uh, these are good indicators, those teal indicators to the right and the green mm -hmm. indicator to the left. Now, uh, the build aid little applet to the left near the next to the part list let's click on where it says translation do, 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 do. very tough very tough very tough okay uh select mode let's go with attitude oh okay, okay. now let's move the camera around this means that when translating uh, towards us where we are in the camera in the direction of the red straight arrow mm -hmm. there's a pretty healthy amount of torque that's what the red circle indicates okay now under attitude it says reference com direction down Just click on down so we can so we can check each of the axes of rotation. Yes, when translating forward with this, there's a pretty healthy uh, rotation torque in the direction of that rounded arrow. Now let's click forward mm -hmm. again. And back, yeah. you would torque in the opposite direction. Right. Now let's, let's look at it in the more traditional side on view. And 
difficult to see, but right there where the center of mass is, there's an RCS mm -hmm. jet. I want you to grab the RCS jet. All right. You can reposition oh, the camera is. if you have to. Yeah, I'll just grab there you that. Go. Oh, boy. All right. Now, what we're seeing, we, we I've intentionally neglected to tell you to turn on your symmetry. If yep. all you have is one jet providing direction, providing thrust in the direction of the teal arrow, mm -hmm. it's going to introduce a lot of torque. Right. Because you have unbalanced translational thrust. Right. You just you just jets on one yep. side means things are not going to go right. Now let's start yeah. applying three and four x symmetry. All right. So if we put three on there, interesting. Okay. The that doesn't take it doesn't change based on where I put my uh, engine the uh, thrusters anymore, or at least that one doesn't. Right. Because, because I actually balanced. misspoke when I was uh, what right I I misspoke when I was talking about the direction being the teal arrow the direction mm -hmm. if it's back we're trying to move the craft in reverse which according to mm -hmm. this view would move it down towards the engine bell, which is what that red arrow is talking about. Mm -hmm. That's how we would... In other words, this would be in response to an N key. N is in November. Right. And what this is indicating is basically if we just put one... If you got it back to one again, um, right. we would start twisting in the direction of the green arrow. Is that right? Um, we would start... I don't know because uh, they, they, they've uh, this mod is in a very rapid state of evolution right now, but gotcha. the fact that there's such a big round red arrow is not good. Okay, so the round red arrow is not good. Right. Okay. So let's uh, click on attitude again. Mm -hmm. You want me to put these back or? Yeah. Right, let's put those back. Okay. All right. Right. So that one's quite small inside of the ship. Yep. So it's yeah. a little bit more stable in this direction because you see that we've lined up the jets with the center of mass. And right. by, by happy accident, we've lined it up very well with almost both of the centers of mass, the, the laden and the unladen, the yellow and the red. Mm. Okay. So let's click on attitude at the top. Okay. Translation. And... All right. Oh, okay. Now I realize uh, they, they, they changed the labels a few versions ago, and it's been a while since I uh, used this. The, uh, okay. the this is translation moving I J K L H N. With right. attitude, it would be moving Q E W A S D. And so in those, those cases, you want rotation. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So now, in direction right, we would be moving in a pretty balanced state with momentum mm. on the green arrow, thrust on the teal arrow. Now the previous display is starting to make sense. Now let's mm. uh, change direction again. And yep. yeah, so... Now let's slide the piece around. The jets. Okay. Oh, I see a... I thought I saw a little red circle. I think I see a little red marker there. Yep. And there's that torque you were talking about. Yep. So that's what you were expecting because, to see, isn't because it? Because we're... Yes, because by putting it up at the top of the capsule like that, you're applying the thrust vector so far offset from the center of mass that you yeah. can't help but introduce a torque. Mm -hmm. There's only two ways to undo that. Counteract the thrust vector at the opposite end. Mm -hmm. or so having two sets center it right top there. and bottom. Or center it right there. And the more centered you are, the smaller that torque indicator becomes until finally it disappears entirely like we have right here. Cool. 
right? Well, wow. all right. So because of what we're going to do, it was necessary to impart uh, an RCS ability on this craft that didn't have it before, which is on a physics-free basis. The thru RCS thruster blocks are physics significant zero, which means once you go out to the launch pad or into the flight scene, their mass is not calculated and their drag is not calculated. They are, however, treated as parts for part count purposes, which contribute mm -hmm. to slow f uh, frame rates on high part count structures. Right. So they are aesthetically and visually modeled, but they are not physics modeled. Hmm. Interesting. And okay. we were able to get away for it for free because we have all the RCS fuel we need in the capsule. Ah, uh, all right. Well, that's that's helpful. The whole thirty that's in here will be more than enough for our purposes, will it? Because well, not the only that, reaction wheel. I, exactly. Not, but not only that. I figured the best way to treat this it's having carried the monopropellant uselessly to the moon that caused our problem. I think the poetry of using that same monopropellant in the same design in the rescue craft to solve the problem is quite poetic indeed. This is true. Yes. So let's shut off the RCS build made indicator. There we go. Like so. And let's look at the top. Obviously, instead of the cap, uh, the uh, capstone parachute, I replaced it with three radials. Yeah. We can right click is... on that docking port to open the shield. Ah, excellent. Okay. So we'll be able to dock with our stations without issue. Exactly, exactly. Let's close it. That's now let's deep. zoom in on it from the side. It's a little bit of a funky looking connection, so I strutted it. That mm -hmm. is a Kerbal Attachment System winch. Uh, the operation will become a lot more intuitive when you're in zero G but you can hook that to other craft and you then have not only a tow line, but a resource and a power transfer line and also a mm. control transfer line. Cool. All right. Uh, I went with the winch instead of pipes because with the winch in my off-screen testing, I wanted to have the option of doing it landed or zero G and the pipes only really work reliably when landed. So I went with the winch. Ah, okay. And, and those are the winch connector ports. Those, ah, the usage okay. of those will become uh, more obvious again, once we get in C2. Okay. So we're going to cut this take. We're going to mm -hmm. put the launcher back on because right now this is a space capsule without its pants, basically. We're going to get it all dressed for launch. We're going to toss it into Kerbin orbit on its way to the mm -hmm. moon to perform its job. Sounds good. And we're back at the launch pad, getting ready to launch to a rendezvous with uh, Kerbal Station 1. Let's call it Station. Uh, I believe it's already done. Set as our target. I understand. I'm, I'm in flight engineer. Let's call up the hit the ah. button mark station. Oh, there we are. Kerbal station Kerbin one. Kerbin station one. Okay. Shall we get rid of? Um, get rid of orbit for now. Okay. Uh, surface would at some point be useful for the terminal velocity, but this is a pretty good design, so we're not worried about that. Mm -hmm. uh, though I did like the way your mind works in going to the map view, so let's look at the map view. Okay. What's our target orbital altitude? Just basically one, just yeah, it's a nice okay. circle or nice circular orbit. All right. Yeah. As time progresses in this flight sequence, uh, the pink indicator marker on our nav ball is going to appear at heading two seven zero on the horizon. Mm -hmm. When it does, that's when we're going to launch. 
um, oh. exactly how soon after it launches depends on a couple of things. It depends on your launch profile, what your ascent diagram is for a particular design, because while the standard, quote unquote, and I'm using air quotes with my fingers, while the standard launch design is straight up for 10k shift over to 45 and then horizontal once your apoapsis is out of the atmosphere different craft different aerodynamics and different mission parameters would change that that would change your uh rendezvous timing the destination orbital altitude would change your rendezvous timing and whether you're in stock far or near aerodynamics would also see so i read your mind <laughs> I'm yes. assuming that was the plan, right? That was the plan. <laughs> that was the plan, and we're basically going to call the ball as we get closer, and we're going to compensate. All right. Now, according to this, if we had been at orbital velocity, it's saying that we were off from our intercept angle because it's not at zero or 360, it's at 330. But mm -hmm. those numbers I don't like because we were stationary got to get non-station first and we can obviously see the uh, station tracking across our nav ball at a pretty decent clip because it's traveling past our field of view at orbital velocity right but our horizontal velocity is zero all right yeah. Good enough. Sweet. Okay, get rid of our Sweet. one kilometer one kilometer separation. How cool is that? Bang that F five, and then alt Done. that F five. Yep. Oh yeah. X two. X. Okay, X two. Rendezvous. Urban 1K. Nice. M. Because one kilometer. Mm. Cool. Well. Let's fire up an alarm. Yeah. Ba doom. Ba doom. And if it's not, yeah, less than one kilometer in one orbit, then it's doing something wrong. Yep. 24 minutes. That is. Yeah, that should be good. We've got saves if something goes wrong here, so. Yeah. And we shouldn't even need the map view. What's... We're close enough to go. Uh, let me mm -hmm. see the map view. Okay. The new purple, what's that distance? All right, so we that only go. Getting... That, that's getting further away, but that's good news. And I'll. Uh, why do you think I think that's good news? Because it means we're really, it means that our relative velocities are pretty close together. Very good. Yeah. So it means our so. margins of error will be very forgiving. Mm hmm. That was nice. uh, one of the better launch to rendezvous I've seen in, in a while. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm glad to hear it. The only way you can get better is to perform the rendezvous at. In and count like at the circulation yeah. burn, right? So, I basically, right when we did that final burn, oh, yeah, there's that's our station right there. Yep, almost don't need the Kerbal alarm clock for this, do we? Well, one we're learning to use our tools, exactly, exactly, that's true. All right, so delete on close. Close alarm. 
And now what do F5 we need to do? We need to F5 for safety, and we need to slow down relative right now, right? Don't we? Because we're starting to That's drift correct. away again. That's correct. So over to the... Man, I forget just how powerful these... Uh... Mm -hmm. All right, and we'll just do a very gentle... That's right, isn't it? Right mm -hmm. on that? Yep. Follow it. Yep. Yep, we are... We're following. Get it down to below point two. There you go. We're at point one, so... Let's open our docking port shroud. Uh, open shield, control from here. Let's govern our throttle down to below 20%. There you go. Done. Because, yeah, because we, we don't have any SAS, so... Or our, we don't have sufficient RCS to use for this... Um, we docking do. Docking process. We have, we have plenty. We're just going to develop good stewardship over our resources and not waste mm -hmm. it. Okay. So we need to start heading towards our target now? Is that the plan? Uh, let's turn on RCS. Okay. Give me a little J and a little bit more I. J. Come on. Oh, hold on. I did something for safety. There we are. Oh, nice. J and I. Okay. We're trying to get that yellow prograde marker onto our pink marker. Gotcha. Well, I is the wrong number then. It's K. Okay. Right? Like so? Yep. And let's get into chase view. Right. All oh, right, because we're probably upside down right now. Well, oriented the nav ball is oriented with the um mm -hmm. ground to the top and which is not a, a view we usually use but that's Let's okay recenter that vector okay just just you know I mean just a little bit more so. okay yeah a little bit more this yep. is a good opportunity to be a perfectionist no reason not to now let's give it some gentle throttle. Uh, what do you think is a good closing speed for this range of about a kilometer? Mm, about a kilometer? Uh, usually no more than... F I usually go for about 5 meters per second at most. I like it's that close. number. Let's have, let's have 5 for safety and sally forward. Sallying forth. Keep in mind, you're throttle governed, so you have much more yep. throttle acuity. This is true. Yeah, because of course the hard part is any speed you give it is speed you have to get rid of later. Mm hmm. Let's turn RCS off. RCS off. And Let's the station is now. Let's over to the station. Now, which port are we? We're on the standard port right here. Well, yeah. Now let's uh, target our incoming craft. Where is it? There it is. Yep. Okay. Control from the receiving port. Mm -hmm. Now, no RCS. Yep. Let's just Q and E so that it's approximately aligned. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's Q and E or not. Uh, all right, then A and D. Yeah, cause, probably because of the normal, uh, because we're on... Uh... Well, we, we nope. reoriented the axes with our uh, control from here. Yeah. What do you see on the screen that's extremely important right now? Our program marker. And our ship is coming that... in quite fast. Yep. And our ship is also pretty close to coming in on the right part of the station. Not perfectly, mm -hmm. but pretty close. Mm hmm Okay. All right, let's get back to our ship and get ready to start slowing it down, because now we can't target the specific part of the station yet. 
but we know we're coming in towards it. Yeah. Uh, let's give it a backflip and use our throttle to slow down to 3.1 or slower. Yeah, we actually accelerate. We're actually coming in faster than we were before, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Any particular reason for that? Or is it just... Uh... Curvatures of the orbits. We're not traveling uh, in straight lines. That would do it, yep. Okay. Cool. Let's manually shut down the poodle. Okay. RCS. RCS is on, and... Call the ball. All right, yeah. Sounds good. No problem here. Yeah, we got really, we got a real good launch there. I'm pretty happy with how mm -hmm. that came together. Let's give this some N. Some N, yes. Yes, time to slow down. There was a rule of thumb given to me um, way back early on in the Better Than Starting Man series. They suggest, it was suggested just for, for approach speeds to be basically at a percentage of this. So if you're yep. 200 meters away, you don't want to be going faster than two meters per second. Yep. Is that, is that a reasonable? I, I mean, like you it. know, with within realm, realms of error, but so you're constantly decelerating in. Obviously, yep. that was a luxury we didn't have with the claw docking uh, earlier. But well, there's that, and it's um, those numbers. For example, a, a, a scaling mm -hmm. threshold of 1% is a scaling threshold of being conservative and careful. Uh, as you become more comfortable with the docking process, you can be a lot mm -hmm. more aggressive and you can turn your scaling threshold to 8%, 10%. Right. Conceivably. I, I wouldn't want to be coming in at no 20 meters per second from 200 meters out. Yeah, well, you, you'd, be, you'd wind up jarring your station at those speeds anyways. If you, at some point, you're coming at a... <laughs> well, you got to be RCS reasonable will about... Not, RCS will not help you go from yeah. 20 to 0. You would, yeah, you're at, you would need you're at engine either, speeds. You're at engine speeds. You would either need to be very gush darn confident or already pointed retro, or, absent that, you would need to have installed mm -hmm. arresting engines and have them toggle with action yeah right so so engines that were fade forward facing engines yep hmm interesting now what do we see we can see the station and our specific docking port which i have actually already taken the liberty of setting as our target and we are not well if, if this is to be believed and we're heading straight for the target on the station we are pretty much right where we need to be right now. Are you sure? No. Not even a little, because that marker is not matching up with the docking port. The marker won't match up with the docking port. That's not mm -hmm. the reason for pause. The reason for okay. pause that I suggest is the visual angle. We're right, not aligned cause... with... We're, 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 on a, we're on a docking trajectory, but we're not docking aligned. So gotcha, let's yes. give ourselves a healthy dose of... Uh, is it J that'll push us to the right? Yep. No, that... Uh, then uh, let's Hell. give us some... Yeah. I see. And then we're going to rotate. Yep. And chase the ch chase our uh, prograde back onto the... Uh... Right? A lot, mo a lot more L. Okay. And a little N and to some, slow us down a bit. A little N and also some I. Okay. All right. I like the point four. And oh right, right no the uh, prograde we have to draw in. That's right. correct. Well, so we, we draw it in with forward thrust vectoring. Not yeah. all of our thrust vectoring is forward when we're under RCS power. 
right so time to arrest our horizontal motion yep because we're pretty close to being lined up now well you, we need to z down a little bit uh, not not uh, well z dimension but not the z key um yeah i we're yep. already on our way Looks pretty good. Just a little. We're going point 0.1, so we probably want to give it just a touch more. Yep. Now, when the magnetism takes over, leave RCS mm -hmm. on, kill SAS. Okay. Now, we are just a little bit off, aren't we? <clears throat> pretty much it's pretty much where we want to be isn't it mm. we're, we're gonna dock That's when you magnets. rotate the camera around, don't use that as an excuse to, uh, don't use that as a distraction from the nav ball. Yeah. When you move the camera around like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you actually good. way over anticipated the magnets, but we Did, definitely. No, I was okay. I, I it felt like there was something that like there was some pulling that wasn't going in the right direction there. Or, okay. but there we go. Let's jog into an out of time compression. Mm -hmm. Done. Quick save. Turn SAS, turn SAS off and then on again. Because mm -hmm. remember, when we docked at the moment of mating, the station SAS was on, the craft SAS was off. So in ah. order to turn all of the SAS modules back on, you just got to toggle through the switch. And the same with the RCS too. Mm. Okay. So toggle RCS on and off. Done and done. Okay. Well, I think that's going to be it for for the moment because that took a took a little while. Yep. Trying. So refuel. Yep. Actually, it's interesting. We feel like feels like we have more fuel on this than we did on the last trip to the moon. Well, we did. We <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, let's let's take on RCS. Mm, yes. All right. So in the next episode, we are off to the moon again. Probably we are off to even. In fact, we'll probably even meet you there. Yep. So thank you all very much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.